Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Milan Antonovic. I work for the University of Applied Science and Arts of <coughs> Southern Switzerland. And I'm going to present you uh, the Borel Data Management System, uh, a web interface for Borel Data Acquisition uh, sponsored and uh, financed by the uh, Swiss topological office. Okay. So, so why uh, the, the first uh, 500 meters are so important in uh, uh, below the ground? The, the first 500 meters are the f uh, most uh, used today. And ninety percent of all uh, activity are uh, done uh, in this uh, portion of the underground, and uh, the borrowed data uh, reveal important uh, information about uh, the geological uh, sequence of the layers. And uh, thanks to this information, uh, it is uh, possible to have a. Uh, uh, a very good uh, overview of all the geological condition of the entire uh, country. So what are today the common practices about uh, uh, producing this data? Uh, the most used approach is uh, producing uh, static data. These are generated by the geologists. Uh, sometimes that are integrated into databases and uh, very uh, rarely uh, the standard uh, the borrow are stored uh, using uh, uh, standards in switzerland the swiss swiss topo uh, produced a federal borrow data model and uh, the main focus uh, is for the exchange of data, uh, the usage and the quality. Uh, having data in a uh, having data in a standard format, we have uh, uh, data harmonization. So uh, the level of details is well defined. The definition of the attributes are or precise, and uh, and all the relations and the dependency among the data are. Uh, well known. Of course, uh, uh, the common language between stakeholders is also important. So, uh, last year, uh, Swiss Topo uh, financed uh, SUPSI to develop a first application, a web, uh, a web application, uh, because until uh, this moment there was a uh, a desktop standalone application, but the user were asking to have something uh, uh, on the web that will be easy easier for sharing data with uh, the Swiss top. So, uh, how is the uh, architecture of the system? We have uh, mainly three modules. Uh, the first one is the web services. It's a Python implementation. Uh, it uses, it relies on uh, some well-known uh, open source uh, softwares, and uh, it offers a, a JSON API interface to interact with the data. And the second uh, layer is a JavaScript API library that uh, exposes all the uh, uh, all the requests of the web service to the to, to the web interface. So and it's uh, packaged in a npm module, so it can be reusable uh, for developing new new application or extending. And at the top, we have the user interface that use, uh, relies on uh, the other two models. <coughs> and uh, everything is now 
is packed uh, in a uh, Docker. So uh, it's, it will be easy to install and also deploy in the, in the cloud. So how it works? There are mainly two modes uh, for usage, uh, a viewer mode and an editor mode. Uh, the viewer mode is a read-only access that offer access to all the published data and uh, offer some capability of searching, uh, exploring with a map, and also ex export uh, selected data in uh, various format, uh, up to now PDF, CSV, and shape files. The editor mode is uh, used by uh, another kind of uh, users that uh, uh, have to create new borrow and uh, the, uh, the creation uh, process go through a quality control uh, flow. So this quality control process is uh, relied on four steps and there is also four type, four kind of uh, uh, roles that user can have. Uh, the first one, the editor, is who produce the data, insert new data of borrow and stratigraphies. And then there is a controller that check the uh, correctness of the data. Uh, then there is a validator that check the uh, uh, in, the, in a legal way uh, the data that are inserted. And finally the administrator that uh, publish the data for the pub public. And uh, at every step, uh, the validation can be reacted and ask for a new check. So data can have mainly three, three kinds of status. The editing is while it is in the, the validation uh, and the creation process. Uh, validated data uh, status, that is all data that have passed all the uh, quality checks. And finally, the published data that are uh, these data that are exposed to the public. User belong to different work groups. One user can uh, be in more than one group. A user can have different roles for in every uh, group, and uh, users can only interact with data belonging to his work group. So this means that uh, until uh, data are uh, published, uh, work group's user can only view and uh, uh, manipulate data belonging to this work group. <coughs> In the validation uh, process, uh, validators and uh, uh, editors and controllers uh, can can exchange some uh, uh, messages, so they can nominate also fields in the in the forms, so that it's, it will be easier to uh, to see what is wrong and uh, and uh, apply the modification requested. The application have a high degree of customization, so you can define uh, which uh, fields are visible or uh, hidden. Uh, you can search uh, with uh, all of the attributes. You can uh, you have six six display modes, and uh, in the map you can uh, select uh, different uh, WMS uh, uh, overlays. Exportation uh, for uh, in the viewer mode is quite easy. Just select what you want to export, and you can then download uh, one or more uh, kind of uh, uh, export uh, files. So in the shape file uh, format, you just get the attributes of the of the borrow without the stratigraphy and uh, also the coordinates. In the CSV, you get everything. 
and in the PDF you get the stratigraphy representation in a, in a, a graphical format. Okay, we can, I can show you a, a small demo with the help of yeah, Massimiliano. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is the viewer mode. So on the left, you can uh, see the uh, s uh, filters, where now there are only a few one, but you can uh, also select uh, more than one uh, filters to choose. So there are. Clicker. So the viewer uh, users can easily find the uh, uh, information that he's looking for. And then there is a graphical representation of the stratigraphy. Yeah, you can also zoom in, zoom out. There is no wheels here. So <laughs> There's a mouse behind the lecture. Oh, thank you. <laughs> This is because uh, you know that generally stratigraphy is dependent, can be very thin, so you can zoom in and check what is it inside, and with the click you can see all the information related to the strata. And then we can go to the editor mode. We are now in, uh, have login as uh, admin administrator, so yeah. we have all the roles. Uh, there is the multi-language uh, support. Mm -hmm. So also here you can, uh, you have your, all your data in the validation process. You can filter by the states of the data or uh, other kind of uh, filters. Okay, on the left we have the three levels of uh, uh, data insertion. <coughs> so the first is uh, information about the location. The second one is about uh, the borrower information. And in the last one, we can add one or more uh, stratigraphy. And on the right side, we see this uh, 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 the validation uh, part, where now uh, we are uh, we see that it's it has been reacted during the validation, and uh, a technical check is needed. So this uh, uh, the process can go up and down until uh, it is uh, published. You, uh, there is uh, this. Uh, Lock, lock and uh, unlock uh, feature, so only one uh, user at a time can edit the data. And uh, with this system you can uh, nominate some fields that then during the next validation process are uh, when are rejected and then they they become uh, red so the user can faster find uh, what is uh, where are the problems so there is the this flow path in the validations and depending on the stage you see 
this bar that shows uh, and activate the mode to check or not, you can refer to different fields and the fields get uh, underlined in red where there is some issues related. So the, the data can go through this uh, validation process until the end. And depending on the role of the logger user, uh, you have different possibility or not uh, to do some actions. You can have more than one stratigraphy from one uh, boreholes. This depends on the different interpretation. So the idea is to have uh, maybe some uh, more geological interpretation and then geotechnical interpretation so that you can access directly to different information about uh, uh, the soil uh, uh, properties. Because this is not, not unique interpretation of uh, the stratigraphy. And uh, yes. I don't know if there is anything more to add. And uh, at the stage of the process uh, of the project, now we are in the, in, in, let's say, uh, we finished the first uh, uh, prototype deployment that now is in demo for testing as we stop. And then from now to the end of the project, we have scheduled uh, the completion of uh, all the details for uh, having the first uh, released version. Okay. The last slide. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for the presentation. I've been involved uh, most of my professional life in capturing uh, uh, geological data and, and evaluating it. And for me, the biggest problem is uh, at the sites, uh, at the drill rig, uh, logging the data. And you know, after the motto, garbage in, garbage out, if you don't have data entered in a common way, all the other technologies are not so useful. How are you dealing with that? You know, coming up with uh, a common vocabulary for entering data. I mean, very simply, what do the headers look like in the spreadsheets or the CSV data that are input into the system? And, and further, you know, what standards are being followed? I mean, most of the world are probably following standards like ASTM, more for soils, and ISRM, more for rock mechanics, and they have vocabularies and they have recommendations and guidelines for how one can input data or at least collect the data. How is all this being handled? But, uh, in Switzerland, they have developed this uh, uh, borrowal uh, data model and uh, there is defined everything from the vocabulary to the uh, ontologies to the patterns representing uh, all these uh, layers. Maybe I, can, I can add maybe that uh, this type of standard in Switzerland is uh, uh, what uh, you can reflect uh, with uh, Inspire. You know, Switzerland is not part of Europe, and, but anyway, is compliant with Inspire. So what they implemented at national levels a, a strategy and implementing different data models for different topics. And uh, they tend to be very, very compliant with international standards and uh, inspire. So I don't know actually which kind of a standard they use for a single type, but uh, the ontology that they use, they take from uh, normal standards. So also the patterns for uh, colorings and all these kind of things, they use the international standards. And uh, in the interface, when you enter the data, you are forced uh, to select one of the options uh, of the vocabulary that you have. 
you cannot uh, almost nowhere is free text to enter okay and uh, the general idea behind this uh, interface maybe to add some uh, is that uh, when you apply for uh, making a new borehole in Switzerland you need uh, to ask for the permissions and uh, local authority give you the permission and uh, ask you uh, to return back the data and uh, nowadays it's very difficult to check uh, if the company then give back the data or not uh, and uh, the idea is to uh, have this interface so that uh, when uh, you give a permission then you can also force them to give back the data in the platform so you have the right formats and at the same time it's very easy to check uh, who is late to give back the format and contact and why and etc and then this uh, uh, platform should also uh, range at different levels. So cantonal levels can uh, collect their data and then push uh, using the format, the standard format to the federal levels and uh, then uh, they decide if incorporate these in their portal, for example, Swisstop or not, because some of the points are not of interest for the federal level and these kind of things. So this is try to harmonize all the flux of data from the user, the producer, to the publication. Any other questions? Uh, how many resources do you have uh, to create this project? Like people who develop the project or money and so on? Um, we have uh, uh, the collaboration of two people from Swistopo that coordinate the projects. And then in SUPSI we are uh, three person. Uh, Milan, which is the main developer, then me, that uh, helping some of the developers and, and other people that more for uh, the com contacts and uh, coordination of the uh, of the things. From a budgetary, the whole thing uh, is about uh, 50, 60,000 US dollars. Yeah, considering the Swiss salary standard. It's, it's not much. Yeah. But uh, of course, we are university, so we have a different price uh, respect to the, but we have also different interest in uh, exploring and testing and developing new, new things. Uh, how many users do you expect to use this system? The, uh, how many editors and how many just viewers? Uh, at least... Uh, <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. <laughs> From the, uh, we actually don't know how does uh, this uh, platform goes in the future, but uh, uh, generally discussing with uh, the people from Swistopo, we don't expect so many people uh, using the platform, at least from uh, this uh, flow control process and things like that, uh, maybe 100 or something like this. And as, as an editor, this is different. It depends how this can will be taken from uh, local authorities. They give the permits uh, and uh, to people to enter the data. So if they take us and those the application to use for their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, work, this can be used uh, much. But I wouldn't expect uh, 2,000 of concurrent user for this kind of application. So last question. Last question. Have you considered using functions instead of building standard stack like Lambda or Azure functions or Google functions, doing it directly into the cloud? Yeah. Uh, not really, because uh, it's not just oriented on for the cloud and uh, using Amazon or a specific. Uh, uh, framework. Uh, so the the idea is to offer this application as a service 
on the cloud, but if someone, some the administration of some cantons or something want to use it, can install easily on their machines. Thank you. Thank you.